nervous the first time I pick up a hot mic. I don't know how loud it's going to be, but this is all right, I think. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. Let's get this show on the road. How's that sound? I got a few words. I'll let you know, though, before I get into my speech. I'm going to try to recap 20 years in 10 minutes or less. So, and if we're lucky, it's five minutes or less. So, uh, if you want, you can sit in the dining room. I think the folks in the dining room will probably be able to hear just fine. Um, and the food is ready if you want to go through the food line. But, here we go. I, I prepared a few remarks. Some of you know this. Probably most of you don't. But on August 1st, 1998, two things happened that changed my life forever. One of those things I was certain of, and the other I had no idea until many years later. You see, at the very moment that my family and my wife's family and all of our friends were gathering at the church for uh, pre-wedding pictures and, and all of that uh, hoopla, uh, the homestead was welcoming its first resident uh, into our community and, and, and into the homestead. Um, by complete coincidence, I have the distinct honor and privilege and pleasure to manage the facility that was opened on the day that I got married. And uh, I, uh, I found that uh, just pretty darn neat when I found out myself that that's how this has all happened. But um, of course it's a coincidence, um, but uh, a good one at that, and at least a little bit of a story. Thank you all for coming out, and there'll be more people coming out as the evening goes on, uh, as we celebrate the homestead's first 20 years of service to the people of Alba and the surrounding area. Uh, we're excited to show off some of our recent updates. You can see, uh, just if you've been here in the lobby or in the cafe, we've got new paint everywhere, we've got a new ceiling in here, and we've got new floors throughout the building, and we've made many, many, many improvements over the last couple months to uh, be ready to truly celebrate our first 20 years. We uh, couldn't have done this without the help of our contractors. Uh, I'm going to try to name a few of them. I've got them written down so I don't forget. But uh, Eddie Madonna and Clint Cushenberry have done our floors. Uh, Minyaras and Sons Construction took care of the walls and, and uh, repairing and painting the walls and trim and ceilings and, and all that you see there. Uh, Joe Decker has donated some of her artwork for display out here at the homestead. So as you walk through the building, you'll see some of Joe's stuff. Um, Greg Bowen has uh, been working on inside of our apartments as we have people that uh, move out and preparing those for people to move in. Greg Bowman's been doing all of the repairs and painting inside those apartments. Uh, we have our signs and banners courtesy of uh, Big Slick Graphics and Lance Harshman and his crew. Uh, of course, Carson Food Services is, a, is our consultant for our, our food services here at the Homestead, and they've uh, helped us to once again put out a really great spread there in the, in the cafe uh, for our party tonight. And, you know, there have been many others that have been so helpful along the way. We also have a number of volunteers that uh, I, we couldn't be here without the help of our volunteers. Uh, Namely, in the, those that uh, volunteer their time and serve on uh, the hospital board. The hospital board has been vital to us being able to uh, bring the homestead through the last six years. Uh, city council members, our foundation members, as well as uh, numerous other volunteers. Northwestern's football team, anytime we need something heavy moved, they, they're here on the spot with just a phone call away. And uh, that that is just uh, a tremendous help. So. Uh, a lot of people have done a lot of work to uh, bring us to this point, and um, as far as the work goes, uh, our staff have put in a tremendous effort over the, I think our staff always put in a tremendous effort, but the last couple months, as we've dealt with construction and renovations and all of that, uh, they've really, really uh, upped their performance to, to help make sure that we've got a clean and safe facility, uh, good food, and, and uh, you know, good activities going on despite all of the commotion we've had. If you weren't here during our construction, it was a little bit of an inconvenience, and, and our residents will attest to that. And my final expression of gratitude would go to our residents and their families. 
we tore up your home. Um, we tore up your home for you know several weeks, and we appreciate your patience and your encouragement and your understanding as we've gone through all these processes. And I think um, I, I've not heard from a single resident that they're not pleased with the outcome. So uh, thank you to our residents. In a moment, I'm going to turn the microphone over and we will have a uh, performance by the Rough Cuts. They're going to play for a little while for us this evening. Um, they've been coming to the homestead as volunteers for at least the last 10 years, and they've been coming ever since uh, since I moved into the homestead. They've been part of the homestead family as well, and they, they're always a, a great group of entertainers, and we're glad that they're here with us this evening. Um, throughout the evening, we will be offering tours if anybody would like to tour the facility or some of our apartments, and we're going to try to keep it to where we... Um, set off on a new, a new tour every 15 minutes or so. Uh, Carla Hess is here somewhere, and Carla will be helping with the tours, and I will be helping with the tours. Uh, you don't have to have one of us to go on a tour. You're more than welcome to go through the building on your own. We do have signs outside the apartments hanging from the ceiling that show the apartments that are open for tours. So, uh, they're both on the second floor. If you want to look at one of our one bedroom or our studio apartments, uh, they are open. And, uh, feel free to go on your own, or you can wait and go with uh, either Carla or myself. And I think the food line, like I said, has already started. So at any time, get up, go grab you something to eat. The food's going to be out all evening long. Um, there's a lot of food out there. We're planning for a big crowd, but um, I think we're going to have enough for everybody. If you want to go back over there. I also want to let you know that if you had to park far away, um, if you need a ride to your vehicle at the end of the evening, just let us know. Uh, we can take you to your vehicle, and uh, and then you can come back and get your party if, if they want to get picked up here at the front. Uh, chances are it may be raining, so you may want someone to go get the vehicle and bring it back, and uh, we can help you do that. And on that note, one final thank you is to Alpha Firefighter Chris Morris, uh, who has loaned us his uh, razor out there for the evening so that we can get people back and forth from down the road. As I thought about what I was going to say this evening, I was uh, reminded by Dr. Self, who was part of the hospital board when the uh, homestead was first imagined. Uh, He'd given me some insight into how the discussions came about and how the meetings then went from uh, hospital board to city council to uh, all of the uh, efforts that went into actually uh, taking the leap and decide, the city finally deciding that they're going to use general funds to build this building so that we can keep seniors in our community and so that we can recruit new seniors to our community. And I, I think what we experienced today um, has to be what they had envisioned back then when they decided to make, build the homestead. I, uh, in my preparation, I ran across some remarks that seemed to fit our occasion and, uh, you know, my, and, and all of our staff, really, our position in this uh, celebration. Uh, in 2016, uh, Kathy O'Dell, she's a leader of a Santa Barbara-based nonprofit, uh, she made the following remarks at uh, her organization's milestone anniversary. She says, endurance isn't easy, meaningful endurance is even harder, and for an organization to endure and be as relevant today as it was at its founding is quite a feat. To be more relevant and more valuable today is an honor that goes to few. I may have a slight uh, bias on this, but I feel like today we are certainly um, in a better spot than we were 20 years ago, and that was our goal all along. I, uh, Odell continued, and uh, she shared through her comments to, to her group that her years of service with that organization were well short of the organization's history, uh, much like mine and, and, frankly, all of our staff here. She had knowledge of the general highlights, and, and many of us in the room have knowledge of the general highlights for the homestead, um, but uh, recounting everything was not something that she was able to do. 
She, she summed it up like this. She said, it's like saying a 12-year-old knows her grandmother's life pretty well. You can recite the highlights. You may know when she was born, got married, had her children, but you have no clue about her journey, what it took to create the vision, the persistence necessary to achieve it, the challenges, near-death experiences, the accomplishments, big and small. You know the highlights, but you aren't aware of each thread that has been carefully woven to create the tapestry that is seen today. I think we all see glimpses of those threads uh, the longer that we've been here. And the people that came before us were part of weaving that tapestry as well. Um, most of us have experienced only a fraction of the homestead's history. But we know a few things. I'll reiterate some of those things. Um, we know it opened in 1998. I know it opened on August 1st, 1998. We know there have been good times and bad times along the way. There have been struggles uh, for the facility. And uh, there have also been really great accomplishments. And so we've, we've been lucky to have been re recipient of numerous awards for, for what we do at our facility. And, but we also know that there was a time when it was thought that it might be appropriate to sell the homestead because it wasn't uh, able to support itself. But we know that led to a time where the city and the hospital authority worked together to bring us to where we are today. And so those are kind of the, the milestones. They matter, but there's never been a milestone reached without a journey. And there has never been a journey without a series of steps, experiences, setbacks, and accomplishments. The journey has been ventured in the lives of our residents. And because our journey has been revealed in their lives, we've had one incredible trip. Our entire staff, past and present, have been truly blessed to serve some of the finest people in the world. The years of life experience among our current residents total nearly 4,000 years. And for every year, there are dozens of stories. Stories of joy and stories of sorrow. Stories of health and happiness and stories of pain and suffering. Stories about close calls, long shots, missed opportunities, good luck, misfortune, and great achievements. And stories about life, how to live, how not to live, and how to truly care. Their lives are our journey. Ernest Hemingway, Hemingway said, it's good to have an end to journey towards, but it is the journey itself that matters in the end. It's the lives of the people we serve that matter in the end. The journey of the homestead has brought us to this celebration, and the journey from here will bring us to many more. Thank you again for being here this evening. I hope you enjoy the entertainment, the fellowship, and the fine meal that's been prepared, and come back again in, in another few years when we do this again. So thank you all very much. You're up to us.